My most humble pranams at the lotus feet of our beloved Bhagavan Baba and my Om Sai Rams to one and all. Thank you so much for joining us today to learn how to make pet big. The National Ladies Wing, in collaboration with the National Young Adults, are going to show you exactly how to turn your old sweater into a nice, comfy, warm bed for those little furry friends of ours. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the next hour as we're going to be so excited to see exactly how to make these beds. Don't worry if you're not able to follow as we're going to be having after the videos and presentations, little Q&A sessions. Also, we will be showing you snapshots with a step-by-step -step to show you exactly how to make these beds. For someone like me who doesn't know how to sew, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a very insightful session. So I'd like to now hand you over to our National Ladies Wing. Loving, Sarah. My humble pronouns at the lotus feet of our loving Lord, Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, Om Sri Sai Ram sisters and brothers, and young adults. We all know that with the cold weather we're having, our pets and animals in the animal shelters need warmth and care. So the national ladies, together with the national young adults, have decided to have this very exciting workshop on making of pet beds. We will demonstrate two types of pet beds. I assure you that it is fairly easy to make. So let's get started. Om Sri Sairam, for bed one, I suggested that you know you could reuse uh, an old sweater, a pullover, or a long sleeve t-shirt to make up this bed. If you have a garment and you do not want to use it up, you could cut from that garment front, back and a pair of sleeves. And the fabric requirements would be, if you have a garment, it'll be twice, uh, sorry, once the body length and once the length of the sleeves. So if you add that up, if you have a top that's 70 centimeters and you have the length of the sleeves that is 60 centimeters, so you would require a 1.3 meter fabric that is 150 centimeters width if you are purchasing fabric. So that would be the requirements for your bed one. You know, like we encourage, reuse garments that you have and even with the filling, if you have an old duvet that you're not using, you could shred up the inner of that duvet and you could use it up. If you have an old pillow, you could remove the filling from that and you can then use that to fill your, your bed. So that would be the requirements for your bed. One, where you're going to need the filling. If it's a ready-made garment, you have that, plus a nice sharp pair of scissors, thread for sewing, and a long needle uh, for stitching by hand. Sai Ram, thank you. I have here a sweater, a knitted sweater, a polar neck one. So all we have to do now is 
get the markings done on that. It's always nice to use the raglan sleeves because of the way we're going to drop the sleeves part when we, when we stuff it up. So this is a setting sleeve sweater, but I'm going to stitch it up to make it like a raglan sleeve. So from the underarm, we're just going to mark and we're going to get a mark here that's going to come up to a raglan sleeve. So we're going to do it to both sides, just coming up to the armholes. Uh, we'll just draw this line out here and it'll come up to the side seam. So once we've done that, we want the bed to be standing up a little bit. So from the armhole part, we're going to just mark across the chest area to the other armhole. So we've done that there. So what's going to happen here now, we are going to stitch this armhole line here and stitch the armhole line here. And we're going to stuff this from the neckline, from the collar. Uh, sorry, we'll also have this line stitch. So we will st start filling from the neck opening coming up to here. So once we've done that, we will then go on to the stuffing of the sleeves. Now that we've stitched the line that was at the armhole to the neck on both sides and we did the chest seam, we now stitch from the neckline up to the stitch that we've done. We've done that there and that is closed. This part is open, the collar or the neck or whatever you want to call it, is where we're going to start pushing our stuffing in. Right, so the filling goes in from there right up into the chest area. Once we've done that and it's nice and firm, uh, this is going to like stand up, right? So we'll have this stitch and sealed up. Then we're going to go down filling the sleeves. So if we roll the sleeves up a little, it's easier to get to the top. So as we're working, we can undo the sleeves. The filling that we used, I know we did say, we're using the wadding that we are going to shred up. And like I've said, we make sure they're not too big pieces. So we're going to fill it in from the sleeves. We're going to go right up to the neck area to where that stitch is. So from there, we're going to stitch. Uh, sorry, we're going to fill. And we're going to carry on right through the whole sleeves and coming down to the cuff or to the open end of the sleeves. So once that is filled in there, we're going to have it stitched. It'll be closed down there. We're going to fill in the body. We've started the filling of the body. So we've left a little opening here and we're going to now fill the body part. So once the body part is filled and nice and firm, will be a bit bulky, but you know, as the pits go in and out, it flattens a bit with their weight. So don't be too scared to give it a nice filling. So once the filling is done, we're going to close the end. I suggest we could probably make the ends a little bit round, or when you finish, you can tuck it in. If you see what I'm doing here, we're going to tuck it in a little. So when we bring the sleeves down, that pointed end would be gone in. So we're going to have this stuffed up. Now that the whole uh, sweater or the top has been filled, the sleeves have been filled, and like I said, we have now pushed the, the corners in there and we've made it round. The sleeves is going to come to the center part, right? The center part is going to come up there, and the other sleeves, the same thing is going to happen. It's going to come up to the center point. So this sleeves and this sleeves here, the cuffs are going to meet. We're going to have this stitched together. This is going to be stitched and it's going to be at the center point. Once we've done that, we're going to stitch all the way from the sleeves around here and around here. This is going to be hand stitched. And when we're hand stitching, make sure you're using a nice strong thread and a nice long needle 
right? We're going to need a, a long needle because this is going to help us now to pick up uh, part of the sleeves and part of the body that's going to be stitched around. So we're just going to stitch that up. Now that we've, you know, I said stitch, we've stitched it out. And here it's all stitched out. If you see, it's stitched between the air and the sleeves. It's stitched up. So it's nice and firm. And here we have the bed complete. Lovely reuse sweater or um, pullover that we've made into our lovely pet bed. Thank you, Chase Aram. Om Sri Sai Ram. I hope you've enjoyed that part of the makeup of the bed. Just to run through quickly on the steps. On step one, you know, as discussed and shown, you've marked the armhole area from your underarm going up to the neckline uh, on both sides and the chest area. And so in a little bit of the neck area from the neck shoulder point up to where the raglan point had started. So that's going to allow you with the opening from the neckline. Step two, you're going to now shred up your wadding. Do not make them into, you know, very big pieces. So the smaller, the better. The bigger, it gets a bit lumpy. And, uh, you know, as you push it through, uh, it doesn't uh, lie too evenly. It doesn't spread out evenly. So make sure the wadding is not too uh, big pieces. So once you've done that, roll the sleeves up about halfway, you know, to, to make sure that you're able to push the full in through right up to the top of the neck. So you could roll the sleeves and then undo as you go on with full in it till you come down to the cup. Next slide, please. On step four, once you've done that and you've stuffed up the sleeves, uh, you're going to fold from the bottom of the hemline of that uh, garment or sweater coming up to the top. Now, normally on that, you would have on step five, uh, the side seam and hem seam of that uh, sweater going to be a little bit of a point. You could then have the point pushed in or you could, you know, stitch it around at the corners, just at the corners, to give it a rounded finish, allowing the sleeve to come through as you would tuck it. On step six, once you brought the ends, the open end of those sleeves together, you're going to hand stitch the sleeves to the, together. And once you start doing that and hand stitching the, you know, the cuff area together, you'll find that the bed automatically will be standing up on the chest area. So the tighter it gets pulled down to the cuff area, uh, you know, the back rest as such will be standing up a bit. So you're going to, on step seven, hand stitch from underarm of that garment, going round, you know, to the cuff and to the other arm hole. So that then completes the hand stitching. So you've got to make sure you're picking up uh, a bit of the sleeves and a bit of the body. Uh, that's what's going to close and fasten up those sleeves and the body together. Thank you. Sarah, next slide. Om Sai Ram, dearest devotees, um, as mentioned, uh, if you have any uh, questions for Auntie Prema and the team, please uh, feel free to comment on the chat box. Sairam, Sister Nerina, if they want to come on with uh, raising their hands, I could still answer the questions. Sure. Uh, there's no raised hands at the moment, um, Auntie Prema, but I think everyone is so amazed uh, on this brilliant idea. So thank you, everyone, for your comments on the chat box.
Om Sri Sai Ram. Requirements for bed 2. You would need polar fleece fabric or any of the suggested fabrics. Uh, you could use them in contrast colors or you could use a print. So the quantity required would be like half in the plain and half in the print. Wadding you would need where you would buy them probably in the meters but preferable get a six millimeter thickness so when you shred it you're going to get quite a bit of it you're going to require a draw cord uh, depending on the size you can get the colors to match a nice sharp pair of scissors you need thread matching colors you need a big safety pin you know more like a napkin pin to use to thread the draw cord through and a very long sewing needle probably maybe like a wool needle that will help you to you know to stitch through the thickness of fabrics so those are the requirements Ram, these are just suggestions you know once you've seen this bed made up uh, for your pet, depending on the size, if you have a small pet, uh, that's your measurements of 0.75 of a color fabric, you could have, you know, contrast colors where you would go with two colors, or you could go with a color and a print. And then you're going to need a meter of wadding that would be shredded and a 1.25 draw cord. Uh, you know, this is the actual measurement on the cord. Wherever the measurements on the draw cord, you could probably just add on another half a centimeter, uh, you know, allowing you to pull it through and to knot it. And then you can probably cut the extra off and then matching sewing thread. For a medium sized bed, you would need a meter of fabric. And the same goes there, where it could be two different colors. You could contrast them, or you could use a color and a print. So, and whatever is there is the a meter of each, a meter of the printer and a meter of the plane. And then you need the 1.75 meter of draw cord and then your matching threads for sewing. For a large dog, you could go in for a 1.5 meters of plane and the same with the print or the two contrast colors. The wadding is 1.75 meters. Uh, sorry, a little more you would need for that, and a 2.5 meter of draw cord and your matching thread. Uh, suggested fabrics, we spoke about the polar fleece, a brushed fleece, corduroy, toweling fabric, or any durable fabric. And I'm sure most of you that have pets uh, would have noticed when your pet gets into either the blanket or a little bed, uh, they have a habit of scratching first and getting everything like, oh, let it be comfortable before I get in. Uh, so once they scratch in, you don't want fabric to rip a tear. So it's always advisable to make sure that that fabric is thick enough and this doesn't happen. So going with the suggested fabric is fine. Thank you, Sairam. Saira, uh, to take you through to style number two or bed number two, it's done with two circles. You could use a print and a plain, or you could have contrast colors in your plain, or whatever you could mix and match. You could make whichever one you want, the inside and the outside. So this is for a medium sized bed that we looked at. It's a hundred centimeter diameter. So the diameter here is 100 centimeters on both the pieces, right? So we've gone 100 centimeters on both the circles. We need to get the center point. Since the diameter, uh, the circumference is 100, the apex point is going to be 50, right? So we've got 50 centimeters there, and we're going to work another circle on the inside. So if you hold your tape measure out here, we're working out 25 centimeters. So from that apex point, you move your tape around and you can chalk mark the inner circle. 
we've done that. You're going to leave an opening, an opening of 10 centimeters to allow your hand to go in to put in the stuffing into the center part here. So there's an opening here of 10 centimeters and then you're going to stitch right round and stop there. So once you have that opening there, you're going to be able to push your fulling in. And we've done another outer circle, which uh, will make the, uh, what I say, the, the wall of the bed, right? So this is going to be your base, and this is going to be standing upright. So we've marked 20 centimeters there. So from there, you've got 20 centimeters, and you have 5 centimeters here, uh, which is going to make the channel here for you to put your draw cord in, right? So on the outer circle, when you're stitching to do your draw cord, in line of where you've had your 10 centimeters, in line with that, we're going to leave the 10 centimeter open there and there. But on this one, you're going to leave it on both sides. On the direct opposite side, you're going to leave your 10 centimeters open here. Because it's quite difficult to go to the other end of the circle. So with this opening here, we're going to fold the left side and we're going to fold the right side. All right. So this opening is here and this opening is here. You have two openings when you come to the outer circle. We're going to have this fold. Uh, we've had the two circles stitched. Where I said we left a little opening in the center and we've had the base folding. And we've left two openings, an opening on this side you know, your hand can't reach and get right across and come around. We've left an opening here, and we've left an opening on this side. So what it allows us to be able to fill in the one half, and then we'll fill in the other half from the opposite way. And if you look, this bed can be reversible, where you could have the print here and the plane, like I said, whichever way you want to put your bed up. So once we've done that here, we're going to stitch, uh, this is now open here, we're going to stitch the 5 centimeter channel right around, and we're going to close this little open ends we used to use uh, to put in the filling. That two ends will get sealed, and the 5 centimeters channel will get sewn, a stitch will be sewn 5 centimeters from the edge, that will allow our drawstring to go in. The edge, both the edges here will be held together and will be stitched. We will leave like about a three centimeter opening to just allow our threader or our pin to go in with the draw cord. So we're just going to have that stitched down and the outside end closed. Uh, we've now done the final sewing. If you see here, we have this five centimeter channel here and we've closed both the pieces together. This is an opening of three centimeters here and this is where we're going to thread our draw cord. Like I've said, you could use a nice big napkin pin. If you're doing that, you make a knot and you put your pin through. I do have a threader that we use and this is one of the threaders that was just made up and I'm going to put the cord through there and we're going to thread this so this gets done much quicker. So we're going to thread right round and pull it up to exactly how high you would want the walls to start being, you know, coming up. Now that we've threaded the draw cord through, uh, I'm just removing the threader out. Um, you know, once we've like, ruched it up to where we want it, just make sure your gathers are even. We're going to cut the extra cord out, right, and like I said, make sure that the knot is well secured. So, when you knot this up, do not knot it this way, because it will open up. Try and do your knot together. If you put them together, and then make a knot, this knot here is much secure, right? So if you do that and tighten it up, so you know that's not going to move. You can cut a little bit of the extra in, or as you want, you can just tuck them in into that opening, 
so it will go in and you will notice the extra of the stroke or that's there so now this goes in and our gathers are nicely evenly spaced out and our little bed is now complete thank you jay sairam we have now completed the bed if you see here we've left the print on the inside we've got the plane on the outside reversible this is completely reversible you could turn them inside out whichever way you want it if you want the print on the outside you just flip it over and you'll get that in this is here now for a medium size medium size bed we've tried another one here and this one here is for a larger dog so this is a nice big one that could be used for larger one we can go a size smaller from the previous one that will be a size small and for our cats and kittens we could also do one extra small i would say that our little cats and kittens can go into i hope that this uh, workshop's been very informative and i'm sure you're all going to enjoy this and by next week i'm sure we're going to be having lots and lots of pet pets thank you jay sairam Sairam, to take you on the operations of that makeup. On step one, as you noticed, we've had two circles cut up, depending on the size that you would require for your pet. We've done an estimate, uh, you know, circumference and diameter measurements uh, with the requirements of the fabric, so that's there. On step two, you're going to get the apex point or the center of that circle. And, you know, like we've went through uh, the way you could hold the, the tip of the measuring tape and work around uh, the 25 centimeters uh, around. So once you've got that circle around on the inside, you're going to hold the tape measure again at that same center point and you'd mark the outer circle. Suggest so that you do stitch both the circles first. You know, don't do the inside circle and then start closing it. Uh, it's difficult to, you know, work with something that's bulky. So do both the circles first and then get in to fit, uh, fill in the base and then fill in the wall part of that bed. So on step four, you've done that second circle that I spoke about. So we will stitch that, leaving uh, openings on either side. Uh, like we've suggested, you know, sometimes it's difficult for your hand to go right through the circle to the other end of that circle. So when it's halfway, you could fill your left and your right and then have them close after that. The next slide, please. On uh, step five, uh, you're leaving that openings on both sides for filling in. On step six, you've got to close at 10, 10 centimeters on that first inner circle, the base. Make sure that is closed. And then when you are going to close the other two open ends of the outside circle, it's going to form a five centimeter channel. So that channel is going to help you to push your draw cord through. So when that three centimeter opening is left there, you're going to you know, push your threader or your safety pin on step seven through that opening. And uh, it will take you a bit of time, but just persevere. Uh, as you are threading, make sure you're letting your cord run in so all your gathers don't bunch up into one spot. When you've completed and brought the other end of the cord out, you will pull it together on step eight. And make sure, like I've you know, suggested how you should knot it, bring both the ends of that draw cord together, loop it up and make a knot, make sure that knot is secure. Uh, if it's not, it's going to give way and you're not going to have a wall on the bed. So you're just going to have a flat two circles, like on step seven, what you see. So don't let the cord run in and always that the knot is secure to help. So just another suggestion, you know, our pets 
uh, run around and uh, sometimes on the dew and the grass and their feet are wet and they want to get back into their beds. Uh, I suggest that you could probably use a, a piece of fabric on the inside or maybe an old sheet you could cut up and just tuck it in. Uh, that will allow you to take out the fabric to wash and clean. Otherwise, if you're going to be washing these beds and because of the amount of filling, uh, may take two or three days to dry as such. So that can be considered if you want to probably just put in something into those beds that are easily uh, detachable, that's just placed and can be just removed and washed uh, and put in again. Uh, the bed is fairly warm, so don't be afraid that you know, if you're going to put a piece of cotton sheet to something that it's going to be cold. Uh, the idea is that the, the whole bed itself is a warm uh, bed made for them. The fabric inside is warm, so they will still be kept warm. Thank you, Sairam. Sairam, thank you, Aunty Prema, uh, for those steps and guide. I think the demonstrations were very insightful. Uh, we do have a question from Sister Fiona, um, and her question is, if we have an old pillow, can we use the entire pillow to stuff from the bottom to fill the seating area and add on stuffing to the other sections? Uh, Sairam, uh, all right, you could use that depending on the size of the bed that you're going to be making up. Uh, maybe one pillow filling, uh, maybe enough for the bed to the circle and, uh, you know, not full onto the walls of the next circle. So you may need a little extra. And the same goes for the bed one. You will get the bed, uh, the base filled and that neck area that stands up, the chest neck area, and maybe one full sleeves. Uh, just depends on how high uh, the, the thickness of the pillow and how much of filling was in that pillow. You know, sometimes uh, fillings are thick or sometimes you may even have foam chips in a pillow uh, that can also be used. But just make sure that the chips are not too large. And if they are, then I suggest you cut them up into slightly smaller pieces and you could use that uh, foam chips also. I hope that answers your question, sister. Thank you. Sairam, uh, we have a raised hand from Sister Mohini. Yes, Sister Mohini. Sairam, Sister Mohini. All right, here, yeah, no problem. Sairam, there's no further questions on the chat box. Sairam, I suggest that if you, <clears throat> sorry, if you have cats, uh, they're much smaller than our dogs that we have. So you could go, you know, like I suggested, a circle, an extra small for the little cats or kittens that you have. And if you see on the yellow uh, bed is a large dog that's in there. So he seems to be quite comfortable in there. Just his tail needs to be tucked in. Otherwise, it's big enough for him. And as for the sweater, one is a, a, a small little poodle in there. And the cat seems to have enjoyed that bed. So she jumped in. So... I'm sure our pets are going to love their beds. Sairam. Thank you, Sister Prema and Sister Alan, uh, Sister Narina, our most loving pronouns at the lotus feet of our divine master and loving Lord, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. 
um, dear sisters and brothers and respected elders, I'm sure the beautiful beds that we were able to see this evening uh, have certainly warmed all our hearts on this very cold evening that we're experiencing across the country. Uh, our deepest gratitude to Swami, uh, firstly, for giving us this opportunity uh, to participate in such a beautiful Seva initiative, and also to our dear ladies forum as well, for lovingly guiding us with simple to follow instructions uh, in making these precious beds. Um, as mentioned during the session, these can be made for furry embodiments of love that are in our homes, but also for animal shelters across the country, uh, to which love offerings will be done through Seva programs uh, that are going to be undertaken by the young adults uh, during Youth Month in June. We also express our gratitude to the media team for their loving assistance this evening, and also to you, our dear devotees, sisters and brothers, for your attendance and participation this evening. The easy to follow instructions that um, were put up during the program today will also follow uh, with the video in due course uh, via our media channels, and also in a written format so that these can be used at home or within the regions uh, when these pet beds are being made. Um, as mentioned, these can be used for some of the pet seva initiatives that will be taking place within the regions uh, by the young adults next month. And some of the regions based on capacity will host some of these uh, bed making workshops in person and will be coordinated uh, by the ladies forum and the young adult wing. So please feel free uh, to reach out uh, to any of the ladies forum coordinators and young adult coordinators um, in your centers and regions, but they will also be uh, communications um, coming through in this regard as and when these workshops are planned. With that, with the cold and wet weather across the country this weekend, we pray that uh, Swami protect us all and keep us all warm and safe uh, during this time. And we wish all a very blessed week ahead. We now hand back to Sister Narina for closing comments and prayers. Loving Sairams. Um, Sairam, I think before we close off with our closing prayer, we do have our Vice uh, President um, from the National Forum, uh, Sister Priscilla. Uh, so Priscilla, would you, um, do you have any comments uh, or you'd like to share any thoughts from your side? Um, Om Sai Ram, thank you, Sister Nirina. Offering my most humble pronouns at the Divine Lotus Feet from our dear Lord. Um, this is such a beautiful, beautiful seva. Um, I was just mesmerized that in 10 minutes, um, the bed was made. I, I, I really commend uh, Sister Prima and her team. It is such a beautiful se seva for our pets. Um, not too long ago, in fact, uh, just over a month ago, I became a grandmother of a pet in that storm came to us in the night of the storm, which was on the 11th of April. And she just appeared at our gate, a white kitten with blue eyes. Uh, so naturally, my daughter adopted her. And when this, this, uh, the poster was circulated, we were just so excited to be a part of this seva because uh, once again, you know, Swami's placed so much of emphasis on our fairy friends as well. So I really wish to commend uh, Sister Prema and, I, and her team. Wonderful seva, especially now that we're heading into winter. Thank you, sisters. Sairam. Sairam, thank you, Sister Priscilla. Dear devotees, we will now end with closing prayer. Om Asatoma Sadkamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mithyoma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Samastha Loka Sukino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 
जय बोलो भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा की जय